The Folk Alliance International Conference is underway at the Western Crown Center. But as you'll see, the people who plan, build, and showcase these thousands of talented players work here year-round. It's part of our collaboration with Casey's Studio Magazine to cover the arts more fully. Take a look. Everyone is at the conference. It is ultimately, as much as it is a, an amazing family reunion and an industry event, it's ultimately about um, artists finding work for the next year and beyond. And presenters are there to select the artists that they hope to book, and artists are there to connect with the people who will network them and, and connect them with their future audience. We have nine stages going on at one time. We currently stagger those stages, so four to five performances are going on at any given time. We currently have 199 official showcase artists. Private showcase is a totally separate entity that we don't program, but we currently have just under 3,000 private showcase performances going on late night. It's crazy, but it's fun crazy. If this is what fun crazy looks like once things are underway, here's how the home team gets ready for it two weeks out. Folklands International, this is Leah. So the best place would probably be the Century Foyer. Do you have his number? Would I be able to call? I think phone is sometimes easier than email. Just make it strictly private events or... Lots of last minute questions have come here looking for answers. Even as shipments and supplies for the conference keep piling up, and inventory for the annual silent auction is coming down. Since the operation moved here from Memphis in 2013, some major changes have occurred. Executive Director Lewis Myers first shifted his role to special projects, then passed away suddenly in 2016. The folk store he'd brought with him closed down last summer to make room for more full-time employees. They're now up to seven. Lewis, when he did it, it was really like all in his head. And I would come to the office and, and then I showed up to the conference. I'm like, when did he do this? Like, what happened to create this? Okay. But it's been fun being on the other side and actually diving deep and doing the planning um, that Lewis had done for so many years before that. With so many performers to wrangle, considerable time goes into getting the lineup just right. But this year's conference, more than ever, incorporates elements of what they like to call around here the ethos, like making sure this five-day indoor event is as green as possible. We started with partnering up with Bridging the Gap, who came over here and trained us on how to recycle, how to compost, how to set up stations, and they are working directly with the Weston Hotel. Last year, we implemented a hotel key card that's made out of wood, not plastic. This year, instead of having handbills all over the hotel, we're asking people to do digital ads. We're trying to implement as many of those things as possible throughout the conference. It's not exclusively about music. The folk music community comes with, uh, with more nuance than, than just a, a style of music. And, and that includes being mindful of our, our footprint. That includes being socially active. This year's theme was actually chosen 18 months ago, but its timeliness has helped bring out some heavy hitters, from Billy Bragg and Donnie DeFranco to Bruce Coburn and Rami, often called the Egyptian Bob Dylan. As troubadours always did, traveling from place to place, telling the news of the day, so too do the, the modern folk singers with their perspectives and stories, and it's one of the important reasons to have this international cross-pollination is to, to be sharing ideas and perspectives. Which is good. It's exciting to see really talented musicians yeah. put down their instruments and listen to yeah. someone else and be inspired by what they're doing and, and see opportunities to, to play with new styles of music or to incorporate new things into their work. 
sometimes cross-pollination starts at home. The Folk Alliance Artist in Residence program is teaming poet and policeman, Chato Villalobos, with making movies. On Sunday, the band will take part in the first ever Kansas City Folk Festival, an event the organizers hope will someday stand on its own, regardless of where the conference may be taking place. Now with the opening chords just about 48 hours away, a team of volunteers is helping the staff load up and move on to the venue. Veterans of this process like Jennifer Rowe know they can count on a couple of things. One, there will be some surprises, and two, they'll have precious little time to actually hear any music. It's rare that I get to experience and enjoy more than five or 10 minutes of something. Five or 10 minutes is a luxury. There was a moment last year where I walked by a room and saw the crowd and I'm like, we did that. Like we brought these bands here and put this on and people are loving it and enjoying it. And that's, it's very rewarding to see that. It's ironic to have come from the music side and a, a one-time showcasing artist at Folk Alliance to now be popping my head in at the end of a very long conference to see a few shows in the wee hours on the Saturday night. I think of it as kind of like a high school dance where you just have moved from one corner to another. So once an artist in one corner um, and, and now an administrator in, in another, but we're all there to do the same thing and that's you know, me there at the high school dance. And, in this case, it's just a, a really big high school dance.